Dennis Rader was born on March 9, 1945, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to Dorothea and William Rader, one of four sons. Growing up in Wichita, Kansas, Rader would later describe feeling ignored by his mother in particular and resenting her for it, but said that neither parent paid much attention to their children at home and often worked long hours. Dennis began having sadistic sexual fantasies very young about torturing trapped and helpless women, a practice he would elevate while in adulthood when he would dress in women's clothing and a female mask and bind himself, taking pictures and pretending to be his victims as a sexual fantasy. While dressed as these women, he would spy on his female neighbors, wearing stolen panties and acting out sexual fantasies for voyeurism, autoerotic asphyxiation, and cross-dressing, often masturbating with ropes or other bindings around his arms and neck. He did a good job of hiding the side of himself and was even well regarded in his community as friendly and polite, and would become a member and eventually president of the local Christ Lutheran Church. Rader was a mediocre and unremarkable student in his younger years, but seemed to learn some discipline after spending 1966 to 1970 in the Air Force. Upon leaving, he'd marry Paula Dietz on May 22, 1971, and they'd have two children, Kerry and Brian, and would go on to earn an associate's degree in electronics and a bachelor's degree, ironically enough, in administration of justice. His killing spree would begin in 1974, the same year he began working for ADT security services and began installing alarms, many times for people ordering security specifically because of the killings he was responsible for. His first 1974 murder would be not one, but an entire family. He slaughtered Joseph and Julie Otero and their 9 and 11 year old children Joseph Jr. and Josephine, leaving them for the eldest child Charlie to find as he returned home from 10th grade. Rader wrote a letter describing these murders in detail and stashed it in an engineering book in the Wichita Public Library in October of that year. Writing this letter would begin a practice Rader would engage in regularly contacting news stations, law enforcement, and newspapers in demanding coverage, taking credit for and describing his murders. In early 1978, he sent a letter to television station KAKE in Wichita, claiming responsibility for the murders of the Arteros, Catherine Bright, Shirley Vian, and Nancy Fox. He suggested many possible names for himself, including the one that stuck, BTK short for Bind, Torture, Kill. He demanded media attention in his second letter to the station, forcing the announcement that Wichita did indeed have a serial killer at large. This letter included a poem, O oh Death to Nancy, a parody of the lyrics to the American folk song, O oh Death. In the letter, Rader claimed his urge to kill was driven by something he called Factor X, characterizing it as a supernatural element that also motivated Jack the Ripper, the Hillside Strangler, and the Son of Sam. In 1979, 63-year-old Anna Williams would be one of the few to escape death by returning home much later than expected when visiting friends. Rader had become obsessed with Williams and waited hours for her in her home, becoming absolutely livid when she didn't show and leaving. On May 5th of 1985, 53-year-old Marina Hedge was found in a remote ditch. Rader had killed her more than a week prior on May 5th, taken her body to Christ Lutheran Church, and begun photographing her body in various bondage positions. He had stored plastic bags and other materials there in preparation for a plan he called Project Cookie. When three members of the Fager family were killed in Wichita in 1988, Rader wrote a letter calling the crime, quote, admirable work, though he did not claim responsibility and is not believed by authorities to be the perpetrator. Rader's final victim, Dolores Davis, was killed on January 19, 1991, and found a couple weeks after on February 1st. The case was cold for nearly a decade and a half, until in 2004, Raider's need for attention and admiration reemerged, and he began a series of 11 communications to local media and law enforcement that would be his downfall and lead to his arrest. In March of that year, he sent a letter to the Wichita Eagle using the return address Bill Thomas Kilman, BTK, claiming he had killed Vicki Wigurl on September 16th of 1986, and he enclosed photographs of the crime scene and a photocopy of her driver's license. 
It was not previously known if BTK was Vicky's killer before this. DNA had been taken from under her fingernails and hundreds of men had been tested with over 1,300 DNA samples. These would later be destroyed by court order when it was confirmed that Dennis Rader was her killer. He began leaving packages around town, one taped to a stop sign and another left in a park, where he would describe murders and leave chapter lists for a story he called, quote, the BTK story. More letters would follow to news stations and law enforcement, eventually culminating in a bizarre and puzzling end when he made a mistake extremely uncharacteristic for someone as calculated as he seemed to be. Rader wrote a letter to police asking them if he put his writings on floppy disk, whether or not they could be traced. The police answered his question in a newspaper ad posted in the Wichita Eagle, saying it would be safe to use the disk, and amazingly Rader believed them, sending a purple 1.44 megabyte Memorex floppy disk to Fox TV affiliate KSAS-TV in Wichita on February 16, 2005. Police found metadata embedded in a deleted Microsoft Word document that was, unknown to Raider, still stored on the disk. The metadata contained the words Christ Lutheran Church and was last modified by someone named Dennis. Police conducted an online search and learned Dennis Raider was president of Christ Lutheran Church's council. One detail police knew about BTK already was that he drove a black Jeep Cherokee. When in Raider's spree with leaving packages and items around town, he was seen in the distance of a Home Depot camera driving the vehicle and leaving a cereal box containing a bound doll in the bed of a pickup truck. Upon learning of Raider's identity from the floppy disk metadata, they drove by his house and found he did indeed drive a black Jeep Cherokee. Though circumstantial evidence was now fairly strong against him, police felt they needed more direct evidence and obtained a warrant to test the DNA of a pap smear Raider's daughter had taken at Kansas State University when she was a student there. The DNA of the pap smear was processed by the Kansas Bureau of Investigation in Topeka and showed a positive familial match to the sample taken from under Vicki Wigirl's fingernails. This provided the evidence police needed to arrest Raider, and he was pulled over while driving near his home in Park City on February 25, 2005. Police swarmed Raider's home, church, office at City Hall, and the main branch of Park City Library in a search, and the next morning Wichita Police Chief Norman Williams announced, Bottom line, BTK is arrested. Raider was charged with 10 counts of first-degree murder on February 28, 2005. On May 3rd, the judge entered not guilty pleas on his behalf since he did not speak at his arraignment. However, on June 27th, the scheduled trial date, he changed his plea to guilty and described the murders in detail, making no apologies. But when victims' families made statements on August 18th, he did apologize in a rambling 30-minute long monologue likened to an Academy Awards acceptance speech that included attributes often observed in psychopaths, including the inability to understand the emotional content of language. Surprisingly, however, Rader would break into tears during his 40-minute long transport to El Dorado when victims' family statements from the court proceedings came on the radio. Rader was given life in prison since the death penalty was not legal during his sentencing. When it was reinstated, police began researching cold cases in surrounding states. But despite rumors and claims to the contrary, police believe Rader committed no additional murders to the original 10 he was charged with.